Okay. I guess we can get started. Okay, so um, we're talking about the development of the GI system, all right? And we're going to begin off with just the, um, I guess, early embry embryological events. So we're going to have the embryo folding, all right? We're going to have a cranial, caudal, and lateral folding, all right? So here we can, because this is a cross-section, we only see the lateral aspect of the fold occurring. And we already discussed this before, right? So you got this amniotic cavity, mm -hmm. all right? It's going to cover the yolk sac. So as it's trying to go around the yolk sac, the yolk sac is going to retract, and that yolk sac is going to become our gut tube, mm -hmm. all right? Now, so at this stage here, we're at, we have the trilaminar embryo. By trilaminar, tri we're just saying that it has ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm, right? We see the ectoderm, so I'll just quickly highlight some of these. We're not going to really understand this, it's just kind of review. This is the ectoderm right here. The mesoderm is all this, this little stuff here, all this, this mesoderm. And then the endoderm was this right here. All right. All right. When we talk about the mesoderm, we said we have the paraxial, the intermediate, and the lateral um, lateral plate mesoderm. So the lateral plate mesoderm has two parts, right? Mm -hmm. We had the splanchnic one, which was associated with what? What was the, the splanchnic um, one? Somatic. Hmm? No, it's splanchnic. It's um, mesoderm. Yeah. What is it? What was the splanchnic one associated with? Endoderm. That's right. So it's associated with the endoderm. Um, and the somatic lateral plate mesoderm is associated with? Ectoderm. That's right. So um, this is what Dr. Baker said. This splanchnic lateral plate mesoderm, because it's going to cover the future gut tube, all right? So the endoderm is going to make the epithelium of your GI tract, essentially, the epithelium starting from your esophagus up to your anus is going to make the, the, that epithelium you understand so meaning that this thing here in purple this endoderm is going to make the epithelium of your future gut tube and that makes sense right mm -hmm. right so this part here is going to make the epithelium of your future gut tube now the 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 endoderm sorry the mesoderm the splanchnic mesoderm that is surrounding that endoderm all right the splanchnic mesoderm that is surrounding that um, the the endoderm is going to form the connective tissue. All right, the smooth muscle that makes sense, right? It's going to have to form the smooth muscle, the connective tissue, and the vessels, uh, the blood vessels that's associated with the gut. Whereas the endoderm is just forming the epithelium. All right, so so. From um, when you're looking at the esophagus, it's stratified squamous. When you're looking at the esophagus, it's stratified squamous epithelium. Mm -hmm. And then when you're looking at like everything else up to like the anus is um, simple columnar epithelium. And then like part of the anus is also stratified squamous. So all of that is coming from your endoderm. Cool? Mm -hmm. And we said that the endoderm is coming from the yolk sac. So it turns out that because of the view that we're looking at this we're looking at this cross section here, the view that we're taking the cross section, we're not able to see that there's actually part of the um, there's actually part of the yolk sac that is still out here somewhere, right? So what we're saying is that because of the sectioning, this cross section, right? We're not able to see that part of this um, yolk sac is actually going to be out here somewhere in this space. Mm -hmm. It's just that the sectioning was, let's say, like, let's say, actually, let me see. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, look at this. You see this, right? Mm -hmm. This here is the embryo. 
Now you see the head, and you see the, the well, the tail, right? But not the tail, because we don't actually have a tail. But, um, so, because this, this is kind of like left side, right side. This, this here and this, and this here are the same events, but taking from a different cross-sectional view, right? So what I'm saying is that this is your yolk sac. As that amniotic cavity is coming down and the yolk sac is going to retract and form, you can see that this part has already retracted. And this part has already like, some of it's kind of retracting over here, right? So what I'm saying, like in, around the center, you're at, around the center you're actually going to have, after it retracts, you're actually going to have like a continuation. It's just that, so this up here, like if you're looking at this right here, this is a sectioning of this right here. so that you don't actually see a continuation of the yolk sac coming out into the amniotic space. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So um, this will become relevant later on. It's gonna become, it's actually important that you see that. But don't worry too much. Okay, so um, we have two major spaces. Um, we have the, we had an amniotic cavity, which was, um, which eventually is gonna surround Wait. Yeah. I'm confused. Yeah, sure. What? Uh, what, are you, what are you confused on? Like, on the far left when you wrote, is that the endoderm and the yolk sac? Which one? This right here. This. Is it? Were you just saying that the endoderm um, lines the yolk sac? Endoderm. The yolk sac is the end. Uh, um, is the endoderm. The endodermal tube, the gut tube, is derived from the yolk sac. Okay, look at this. Let's think about this. Where is our endoderm? This is this is the endoderm, right? The endoderm is 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 here, right? Mm -hmm. What did this come from? It came from the yolk sac. Well, m maybe, okay, I see what you're saying. Maybe a better way to say it is the cells lining the yolk sac. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It make more sense? I kind of see what you're saying, yeah. Maybe a better way to say it is to say that the cells lining the yolk sac is your endoderm. No, maybe. Uh, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. If it doesn't make sense, just let me know. But I think it, it should make sense. Okay, so we have the two major spaces, amniotic cavity, and then we have the yolk sac. So we already know this. So as the embryo is folding, amniotic cavity comes down. Um, the somatic lateral plate mesoderm um, that's also associate, associated with with it will actually come down. Just meaning this, these guys here. This here, somatic lateral plate mesoderm. This somatic lateral plate mesoderm is gonna come down. You can see it right here, right? So this is somatic lateral plate mesoderm is actually coming down as the amniotic cavity is coming down as well. All right, so the amniotic cavity will surround the entire embryo. The yolk sac gets pulled up inside the embryo, and we form this intraembryonic coelomic cavity. All right, and we already established it is basically one cavity that, that consists of the abdominal, pelvic, thoracic cavity. So it's one cavity, but it will become the abdominal, pelvic, thoracic cavity. Mm -hmm. Could you go up, please? Yeah, sure. Okay, so we're saying that we have the intraembryonic coelomic cavity, which was this cavity right here. Mm -hmm. So it was the cavity directly outside of your gut tube. Notice that this part here is, is lined by what? This is your somatic, somatic lateral plate mesoderm. And then notice that this part here would be what? Exactly. Well, actually, 
No, no, no. Actually, no. That actually is incorrect. Because the splanchnic one is lying in the gut tube. So all of this most likely should be somatic. Okay. Okay, so... um. Okay, moving on from here. Okay, so now that we have now that we have formed this cavity, we need to divide it. Mm -hmm. Just like what we said previously. All right, so how are we going to divide this? Septum transverse. That's right. So we're going to we need to get the diaphragm. We need to put the diaphragm in there. So the diaphragm is derived from cervical mesoderm. Meaning mesoderm that develop in the um, the head the head region. I think it's like it's like so mites or something. But cervical mesoderm. So that cervical mesoderm is called the septum transversum. All right? And this cervical mesoderm or septum transversum, whichever one you want to call it, is going to migrate uh, in, uh, to the area that will become the diaphragm. All right? So it turns out that the diaphragm is not just made up of the septum transversum alone. All right, there's some other um, things that also form, helps to form the diaphragm. But, um, so in addition to helping to form this, the, the diaphragm, the septum transversum is also going to um, form the ventral mesentery. All right, so the septum transversum. What we're saying is that the septum transversum, we can see it as cervical mesoderm. All right, now this cervical mesoderm or our septum transversum, which was like in the, in the neck area, or whatever, is going to migrate down and it's going to help us to form our diaphragm. That's one. Number two is going to help us um, to form our uh, ventral mesentery. So here they have a little drawing of the septum transversum a little bit here, so you can see it here. Septum transversum there. All right. So septum transversum, septum transversum is helping us to form what? The um, diaphragm and ventral mesoderm. Ventral what? What's it called? Not mesoderm. Mesentery. That's right. Mesentery. That's right. So it turns out that that ventral mesentery, all right, that ventral mesentery is actually going to, is going to form your falciform. This is supposed to be falciform. I put filiform here. This is supposed to be falciform, so take note of that. Okay, this is what happens when you uh, write too fast. It's going to help you form your falciform ligament and your lesser omentum. And we'll see these later. This a lot of stuff was in Kurtesky's lecture. But the falciform ligament is the one that's coming off of the liver. And. Um, the lesser omentum is the one that is like beside the stomach and let me see if I see it here. Underside of the stomach and the stomach. One second. Give me one second. Alright, so yeah, so this is our, our lesser omentum. So okay, let's just get this oriented. Let's get uh orientation this here is your colon all right so like your head would be up here somewhere this here is your liver right here then this is your stomach all right so let me see the way you want to you want let me see the way you should consider this imagine that you bisected someone like from you you did a sagittal bisection of someone that's what this is looking at so basically, near the uh, where you have the liver and the stomach, you have uh, is you have um, 
you have some I call this peritoneum uh, peritoneum that is connecting both of them together and so this, this is known as your last momentum this is your greater momentum right here and then here right here is your lesser momentum okay so are we good so the ventral mesentery is forming what? The, the lesser momentum and the falciform ligament. The splanchnic mesoderm is found where? Splanchnic is associated with endoderm. What does it become? Um, connective tissue and smooth muscle. Okay, that's right, and also vessels. How, what forms the epithelium of your gut tube? Endoderm. Okay. What kind of epithelium do we have in the gut tube? Uh, stratified columnar? Not stratified columnar. Okay, so, okay, so when you're looking at the GI tract, all right. So you have two, so you have stratified squamous. And then you have simple columnar. So the stratified squamous is found basically anywhere like you have a lot of like abrasions and stuff, I think. So I think that's how like the mouth well let's okay. Well, when you have stratified squamous, it's more like you have some like contact things or rubbing against each other, like rubbing against walls and stuff. So where you have stratified squamous, your GI tract is your esophagus. And um, this is a distal, like <coughs> a distal anus. And then for the simple columnar, that's gonna be everything else. everything between those two, um, between the esophagus and the distal anus. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. All right, so moving on from here. So um, I guess it's important to note that the ventral mesentery is only associated with the foregut. All right, so what we just looked at is, so we just saw that we formed this intraembryonic coelomic cavity. And we saw that this cavity would, would later become our abdominal, pelvic, and thoracic cavity. And we considered how it was being divided. Now, it turns out that this cavity is lined by a membrane. All right? There's going to be a membrane that's going to be covering the gut tube. That's going to be our what? Visceral peritoneum. The visceral peritoneum, visceral meaning on the organ. So we got the visceral peritoneum. And then you have the membrane covering the body wall. So in the thoracic area, it's called the parietal pleura. In the abdominal area, it's called the parietal peritoneum. Two different things, right? Parietal pleura and parietal peritoneum. So then, therefore, the membrane around the lungs is called what? Visceral pleura. That's right. 